Nexus is the first game in VR for Assassin's Creed. So it's the first time that you can play Assassin's Creed in first person. It's the first time you can play multiple assassins in the same game. So across three different settings, three different assassins, and the full range of iconic AC actions like Hidden Blade, Stealth, Combat, Leap of Faith, Parkour, Climbing, Throwing Knives, all these types of weapons, the Tomahawk of Connor, all of that stuff we put in the game because we really wanted to make it a true AC experience. Parkour is obviously one of the iconic AC actions that we think players are going to be really excited to do in Nexus. Running across the rooftops in large open urban areas is something that really is so fundamental to the brand that I didn't feel like we could compromise on it. So the team has done some amazing technical wizardry to allow the player to basically approach all these maps from 360 degrees. You can see it, you can climb it, you can parkour it. So from Venice to Greece to Boston and even new areas like Newport for Connor, um, they're all what we call open map environments. The player can traverse on the ground, scale the walls, climb the rooftops. VR allows you to perceive depth uh, in the environment beyond, you know, when you play on a, on a TV screen, on a, on a normal screen. This is redefining for Assassin's Creed and the, the, the way you can look at the environment and, and see all obstacles and, and buildings and basically everything you can see that uh, you think you can grab on, you can in game. So it's really intuitive as well and organic. When you look at the world in Nexus, you see basically handholds, 90 degree surfaces that you can grab. So you're actually using your hands, you're pulling yourself up the side of the building. There's flinging, so you can actually throw yourself up sideways, even backwards, like across a street, which is really cool to do. There's a sort of feet to feet jumps where you're landing and you keep going. Then there's feet to grab jumps, so you jump, you have to grab mantle and, and keep going. Or there's, you know, these, these swing bars, you're, you're sprinting, you're parkouring, you jump, you grab the swing bar, you do this gesture, you know, just like you would in real life, which is what VR is all about, right? Trying to simulate the actual experience, and then you keep going in that flow. It is a stealth first game, sneaking around, peeking around corners with even something as simple as like grabbing the corner of a building and pulling your camera, your head over and kind of leaning and peeking to see an enemy. We've even built in things like cracks and holes in the walls where you can kind of peek through there and it's a use of head tracking there, but you feel really sneaky and you're spying on the guards in the other room. In the environments, you'll have dynamic objects, a vase, whatever. You can pick them up, you throw it. It'll crash on the ground and make a sound and distract a guard that way, and you're actually doing the physical throw yourself. One of the features that we've had that we've always been really excited about is the whistling feature. So you do this with the gesture, you make a ring with your hands and you bring it to your mouth area, and, you know, we're tracking your hand position, and you hear the assassin whistle, and that will call the guard over and you can stab them in the bush and pull them in or whatever it is that you want to do. The Hidden Blade, I would say, is the most important feature in the game, really, if I had to pick one. You pull the top trigger on the controller and you flick your wrist open and the blade comes out. Everybody who tried it, it was always their favorite thing in the game. As we know, Connor and Ezio both have dual Hidden Blades, so we featured that in the game. Um, but what is really neat about Nexus is this is the first time that players will get to play Cassandra with her Hidden Blade. And she has just the one blade because we want to, you know, be true to the story, true to the canon, true to the character. Well, there's obviously combat and you can try and fight your way out of situations. It's really motion control, so you slash your sword, you, you move yourself forward and back and you can dodge a bit on the side. It's really blocking, attacking, and what we call opportunity windows. So when you block, an enemy will come and swing their weapon at you and you need to physically put your sword or tomahawk in the way of it and block just like you would imagine it happening in real life. Then you'll stagger them and create this opportunity window that you can then follow up with strikes and do more damage. We want to create this sense of fighting like a master assassin, but it's going to take time to learn it because you're actually doing your physical gestures and you know having to time things. They all have a primary weapon. Connor has a tomahawk. Ezio and Cassandra both have a sword. They all have some kind of ranged weapon. Connor and Cassandra both have bows, and Ezio has a one-handed crossbow. They all have throwing knives and smoke bombs. So you feel familiar and comfortable playing these assassins with the sort of core weapon set that they have, but there's also some nice specialization of, of who they are. 
So once you've learned the basics of combat, as well as the advanced combat moves, you can put these, this all together and take out a group of enemies Master Assassin style. So for example, you come in from a rooftop, you air assassinate the first enemy, take your throwing knife to finish the second one, pull out your bow, take down the third one, and then draw your sword or tomahawk and engage the last one in combat and finish with a hidden blade lunge. Another iconic AC experience is, of course, uh, air assassination, right? It's really thrilling to do in VR and in first person. So there's even some additional nuances um, that are part of it. So for example, if you're sprinting, your, your air assassination distance will be increased. So you can sprint to the edge of a rooftop, hit the button and fly further and have even a more dramatic long jump kind of kill. Even using the bow as you jump into the, to the air assassination, that slow-mo that we turn on can give you enough time to fire an arrow in, you know, in midair like a, like a badass master assassin. So comfort for VR is really essential, it's key because we don't want them to feel any nausea. That was a priority from the start. Luckily, I've been working on this subject for quite many years. So there is lots of options to make full locomotion in the world comfortable. There is a vignetic system, there is a tunnel vision. It's quite effective to make the game comfortable. We also have a teleport uh, locomotion feature which allows to remove completely locomotion through the space uh, if you need or if you want. Auto parkour is one that allows basically parkour to be done automatically so you just have to look where you want to go. You are going to see uh, previews of the jumps you, you are going to make and you don't need to press buttons, you don't need to, to do particular actions but we have to make sure that it still feels like Assassin's Creed and it still feels like you are doing parkour and you are making the choices. You know also uh, doing the leap of faith that's amazing in VR. Might not be for everyone or it might be fearful for, for some people. We developed uh, that feature called Fear of Heights, so it allows you to turn on and off some grid to basically uh, show you what's the ground in your real play space. Or you can even toggle a, a 3D grid around you and it allows you to understand that actually uh, your ground is very close by. So it helps uh, people that might be afraid of heights, even if you can't reach out or it's uncomfortable to reach out over your shoulder, or it's uncomfortable for you to hold buttons, or things like that, then we have something for you. We try to really develop many uh, features to make the game yeah, fun and enjoyable by everyone. Through testing of comfort and accessibility of the game, uh, we've seen that almost everyone can be comfortable with the game. There's a feature for them, because we developed lots of comfort features and we developed lots of accessibility features. Yeah, people ask the question a lot of like, how do you play three assassins in three settings in the same game and have it make sense narratively? So the idea is that you're an elite player hacker that has been, that is undercover for the Brotherhood and is now working for Abstergo. Dominica Wilk is the main character from Abstergo who has you jumping through memories of three different assassins who have at some point in their lives encountered these artifacts that Abstergo is looking for. She's actually played by Marina Baccarin, uh, which is really exciting for us. It is a new story. It's not a port of these previous games or assassins. But at the end of the day, the biggest, most fundamental pillar of the game that we want to deliver to fans is becoming a master assassin, right? Physically stepping into the shoes of these characters and performing all those actions you watch your avatar do over the years, physically doing it yourself. And that is the real fantasy of Nexus, is actually being a master assassin yourself.